number six and no any trick. Hey guys, it is Cynix again. I'm back for episode three of this painting faces series that I've been doing. Um, a little housekeeping before I get into it. People are asking about painter stuff, so someone was asking about brushes. Um, you might notice I actually set up a custom category in the brush selector thing, and you know you can name it whatever. I just named it Cynix, and I took all the brushes I liked and just copied them over to that because that's a lot easier in terms of just uh, managing what brushes you like and getting to them easily so that's always a useful tip but someone was asking the main brush I was using so let me pull this up a bit higher or let's see yeah gotta pull this up higher um, so let's see we scroll down and it is under pens which is the one that looks like a fountain pen and it is the very last one on the list, and that is the Thick and Thin Pen 5. And that is what I've been using for these videos. So, anyway, let me get back to my stuff here. Um, one other thing about Painter which is useful, if you go to Edit and Preferences, there's something called Brush Tracking. And this is kind of just a useful tool that lets you... You just uh, make a line on the scratch pad here and it'll adjust all the pressure settings and velocity settings to match um, your kind of default pen stroke and it just kind of adjusts things so things look better. I mean it's definitely something to play around with. Um, you can adjust it manually if you want and see what changes. But okay, that's just something to do when you first open Painter for the very first time. Okay, so for this time, I think I'm going to be just filling in this character here, um, just so I can fill out all the map scores in this area. But yeah, so let's jump right into it, and I'll be doing the rest in post-commentary. Welcome to the future. It is post-commentary time. Um, as you can see for this one, I'm just kind of blocking in my... Uh, base color like I've done in the last ones. And the base color I used, or I decided to go with on this one, I would say is pretty much like the last one, uh, using a light tone and working back out to darkness. Which is, I would say, the most common way of doing things. Like, obviously, if you're used to maybe more anime or cell shaded stuff, you're probably used to um, just putting on a light base tone and then drawing shadows on top of it. I think a lot of people get intimidated a bit by just painting in general. Maybe they hear the word digital painting. Um, but it's really not that much more difficult than what you probably have done with uh, like cell shaded type stuff or anime shading, whatever you want to call it. But you're basically just blocking out your shadows and the only differences with painting is that there's, well, there's a lot more depth to the shadows. So you're just basically blocking in different levels though. I mean, you can definitely start out the same way. I, I usually start out a lot of pieces with just like simple cell shading, maybe like two or three shades. And then you just go in, you blend things, you add some different hues. Um, I think that's also one of the best things to do is even if you're just doing cell shading or like two colors, two color coloring, um, make sure you're using different hues. You're not just, you know, going darker, or lighter. You know, that's where you learn a lot about colors, is just experiment with the different hues when you're picking your both skin tone and your shadow color. So, anyway, actually I should talk a little bit about the drawing itself, I guess. It's kind of a weird looking drawing, you may be like, what, what is going on with that? Um, this is one of the ones that was photo referenced, and don't worry, it's nothing scandalous as it may appear. Um, Actually, this is kind of a fun thing to do. I took a a picture I found of um, two people kissing. Yeah, that sounds funny. But I actually draw one of the figures and don't draw the other one. And I've done that on a couple of these. There's one on the bottom left too, which you can just see the eyes of, which is the same thing. It's kind of something, I don't know, it's kind of like a weird thing that's like fun to do because it always makes people look really expressive and awkward. It's like, I don't know, somewhat scandalous and I don't know. But it it's kind of creates a weird look, but it's it's 
it amuses me. So there's two, I think there's two photo reference things, and they're both of people kissing. Actually, no, the one, the one next to her in the top right, the girl that is also based on a photo reference. And also the one back there to the right of that, the male that's actually um, based on a self-portrait. So there's me. So I guess there's some uh, photo reference stuff, some life drawing. I guess that's technically life drawing. And the other stuff is just uh, illustrations, just, you know, kind of randomly building faces, trying to build dudes different angles and expressions with no reference and whatnot. So anyway, back to the drawing at hand. As you can see, I'm kind of, I try to really pop in some bright saturation on some areas like the, like the neck. You can see that just bright orange. And I really wanted this piece to have a lot of bright saturation. Um, obviously, it's still really orange and warm skin tone. And yeah, I'm sorry for that because all three of these have been different shades of um, very warm skin tones, really working in the same areas of orange and red. So the next one will definitely be working with cooler colors and I'll be experimenting with different uh, lighting schemes and whatnot. But for this one, I thought it looked, it kind of, I actually messed around with it a bit and it looked kind of weird to do something too drastically different because it's right in between those other two figures. So I decided that just to wrap up this area, I'd just do something nice and orangey. Uh, but to make it slightly different, I tried to make it as saturated as I could and really go for like a bright saturation in certain areas and seeing what I could do with that. So it's a lot more saturated than the one on the right and uh, more than the one on the left too. The one on the left, the, guy, the male face on the left, is kind of in the middle of the two in terms of saturation. So let's see. Yeah, I'm giving. I'm gonna give her blonde hair just because I left the hair blank. I didn't make it, you know, black. Like you can see, there's a couple characters uh, to the bottom right that obviously will have to have black hair because the line art's based on, on them having black hair. And some other ones I might give, you know, dark hair too. But I figured for this one, you got the redhead next to it and stuff. So I figured it would look best to just really pop in some really platinum blonde hair and. Yeah, I was I was pretty happy with that. Sometimes I like to make the hair like white, you know, like really white, really platinum, really go for a white look, like an unnatural white, because I love the way that looks. Um, if you just go pure white and like have that negative space with the hair, it's a fun thing to experiment with. Um, I forget who I saw. I'm trying to think. There's an artist that did some really good stuff with, with uh, like he did a series of girls that was just pure white hair. Um, oh man, I can't believe I forget that. Oh, maybe I'll post it in the comments, or I'll post it in the description. Anyway, at this point, I actually decided to color correct a few things, because this is kind of the midway point, and I was going to do some other stuff. So now I'm going into the second part of this kind of video, which is kind of the gimmicky part, and I wanted to show off some crazy lighting stuff, uh, kind of some dynamic lighting effects, and as you can see, I'm kind of adding a the impression that like she's in front of some shades or blinds and they're kind of casting these uh, these lines of shadows across her face and this is kind of fun because it'll show you a couple things um, one is to do the actual shadows I'm not just taking a black I mentioned this in the last uh, character but I thought it'd be fun to like really take it to an extreme so for the actual shadows I'm not using like just a black or a darker tone of what I've established I'm actually taking the um, the shadow that I've already established, like on the left side, you can see like in the neck, anywhere where it's darkest, and I'm pulling that color all the way across into lines over the face, and that makes it look more natural than just taking some dark colors uh, that would make it look really kind of black and washed out. So I basically made my lines. I tried to define some form, but I'll be honest, I probably didn't do a great job of it. I feel like I could have done a better job of uh, defining the form with the lines, but that's kind of one of the things that, like, you really want to do if you're going to do like dynamic lighting is you want to use it to define the form, which I didn't really. So, bad example, but I do it a lot in kind of industrial design stuff, and anytime you're drawing anything like that, just using dynamic lighting and kind of shaped lighting is such a great way to just show off the form of something. Um, 
Yep, so now I'm going in on the shadows a little with lighter colors and slightly darker, but I don't really want to make that big a difference to them. I'm, I was kind of sad that I had to block out the lip area and whatnot, because I'm losing a lot of the hue variation and stuff, but, but you know, whatever. You're going to have to lose some stuff to show this off. So, looks like most of the stuff's blocked in. So along the shadows of the edges I blocked in, I'm trying to do um, bring in some really saturated tones because you always want to saturate things right along the line, especially, well, I'm sorry, not always, but with skin tones, um, you want to saturate those uh, those mid-tones like right where the break of the shadow, um, you know, different subsurface scattering effects and whatnot. It just makes it look a little better. Um, yep, and for the hair, I'm taking a slightly different um, color. I'm getting rid of some of the redness and bringing it back to a more greener, yellowish tone to match the hair more. Have like a dark shade of the the blonde hair. And I would say the bulk of this piece is pretty much like summed up here, and I'm just going to be going over the random details and things at this point. Um, you know, I, overall, I wasn't, like, that ecstatic with this, uh, the way this face came out. I mean, it's all right, and I kind of needed something that had that dynamic lighting just to make it, the whole, the whole scene look more interesting, but, you know, it could have came out better. You know, stuff doesn't always come out as good as you want. Um, you know, nothing jumps off too much, but I feel like the skin tones just didn't. Uh, have enough variation, and maybe the shading's a bit too heavy. I don't know. I'm not really sure what, what could have made this better, to be honest. And, you know, sometimes you're not sure. But it's always good to at least think about it, because that's where you learn the most, is from kind of critiquing what you've done and going back over it. So I tried to go over this and figure out how to improve it, but nothing jumped out at me too much. I'm doing a little bit of painting above the line work here, but not too much. I was just getting rid of a couple little tiny lines. Um, there was one below the lips and a little bit with the eyebrow, but overall I pretty much left the line art intact for this one um, just to kind of demonstrate a more basic approach to coloring. And that's kind of also what I was going for with this one was to just make it look more easy and accessible to do something that looks nice and it's a lot of fun to play with dynamic lighting like that so wow how how long do i noodle with this like apparently i was just zoned out just going over little details and things um yeah i got rid of all the lines around the edge as you no may notice once again i I'm not caring that much about the edges and the line quality until right at the end, and that's when I clean up my lines around the edges and whatnot. So yeah, it looks like I'm just, you know, going crazy, overworking everything as much as I can, because I was like, uh, like, that's a good sign that you're not that happy with the piece when you, like, just co are constantly overworking it and going back. Uh, usually, when you do something you really like, you get it on the first try. And, I don't know, it's rare that you manage to actually bring something you don't like into something you do like. So, yeah, I'm just, like, looking at it, how it looks with and without the top layer, the line art layer, and stuff like that. Um, I don't think I show it off, but another good thing to do when you're done... Actually, I'll say there's at least two great things to do right when you finish, uh, when you're like kind of getting in that finishing stage. And the first one is to go up to adjust your colors and just desaturate it to pure black and white. And that's a good way to look at it to see if your values are right. And the other thing is to flip it horizontally. And that's just to make sure your uh, proportions and stuff look right because it'll help you uh, see that more clearly. So, here we have the finished drawing, and I, once again, I think I took it a little after I finished recording and color corrected it a tiny bit. Um, but yeah, it's a simple painting. It, I, th I feel like the lines look good going in between those two other characters. It adds something interesting to look at. Uh, contrast always, obviously, draws the eye, so. Anyway, 
that is it for this video and I thank you for watching and the next one will be playing with hopefully cooler skin tones and stuff like that.